how did each US state guess his name? Yeah, I'm looking forward to checking this one out and see how the states got their names and stuff. So yeah, let's jump straight into this and see what we got. The United States of America are a federal country. Their territory is therefore divided into 50 states. Right. 48 continental plus Alaska and Hawaii. There's a uh. joke that nobody can successfully name the 50 states in one sitting ever since Friends did an episode where Ross went crazy trying to figure it out. In this video, we're not just- Wait, is that true? Do you guys name all 50 states in one? I'm pretty sure people in America name all 50 states in one sitting, right? Just going to list out the 50 states. We're going to understand why each of them has the name that it does. Ah. Let's start with some general characterizations. State names come from a variety of languages. 24 derive from indigenous languages of the Americas, the Native American idioms, although sometimes through European adaptations. 22 other state names derive from actual European languages. And well, yeah, I'm pretty sure some of the state's names came from like um, UK uh, cities as well, right? So like you got New York, we have York, you got, can't remember. I know America has Birmingham, but that's not a state. <laughs> uh, you might just have New York, that's it. There's, uh, I don't know, Jersey, we got Jersey, yeah. I, I don't even know, I'm not too good with geography. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. In words. And the six remaining ones have unclear origins, but we'll get to those in a minute. Right. Of the 50 states, 11 are named after an individual person. Of those 11, Seven are named in honor of European monarchs. The uh. two Carolinas, the two Virginias, Maryland, Louisiana, and Georgia. Over the years, several attempts have been made to name a state after one of the founding fathers or other great statesmen of US history, the state of Franklin, Jefferson, Lincoln, and Washington, with only the last one becoming a state name. Oh, I was gonna say, I was gonna say, it ain't no st a state Franklin, Jefferson, or Lincoln, unless I'm really dumb. But then again, I won't be able to name all 50 states. I ain't gonna lie, it, it, especially one cent. The origin of the names vary a lot, depending on each state, as we'll see now. But there is a somewhat common pattern in many of them, having the initial origin in a native tribal group of the region that led to the naming of a local river, then to a colonial territory that shared the name with the river, and then transitioning into statehood. So now let's go mm. one by one and understand the known or predicted origin of each state. State. I posted timestamps in the description, by the way. So if you want to skip ahead to a specific state, you can use that. Right. Starting with the two non contiguous states. Alaska's name comes from a native language, Aleut, spoken Aleut. in this chain of islands. They use the word Alaskasak, which I'm mispronouncing. Wait, that sounds like Alas sucks. Alas sucks. To describe the meaning of mainland, or if we literally translate right. it, the object towards which the action of the sea is directed. So the place where the waves hit, I guess. Alaska was first colonized by the Russian Empire, who then sold it to the United States. And this native word, Alaska, the name the empire baptized their colony with in the year 1666. Hawaii's name or- Wait, so you're telling me that Russia- colonize Alaska first? Virgin, on the other hand, is less certain. The first year in which the usage of the name Hawaii is registered was in 1879, with the original spelling having an apostrophe between the eyes. The origin uh? is uncertain because there are two hypotheses. One is it coming from Hawaii, meaning place of the gods, oh, I like the that mythological name. homeland of the Polynesians. Oh, I like that name, Hawaii. Oh, I like that. Place of the gods? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go with that. And the other is it being named after a Wailoa, a legendary discoverer of the Hawaiian Islands. Uh -huh. Moving to the continental United States, let's start in the West Coast with California. California got its name from Spanish explorers, choosing the name Las Californias for the peninsula of Baja California and to Alta California, the region that became the present-day state of California. The name likely derived from the mythical island of California in the fictional story of Queen Calafia as recorded in a book from the year 1510. Oh wow, Queen. Do you know what? It's actually really cool that there's background to these names and it will be background and like history to all the names of like towns and stuff, especially like in the UK as well, but you just don't realize it. So like, I'm from Nottingham, but there'll be some really like, well I hope, 
cool story behind how the name came about, but there will be a story. You don't realize that at the time when you're just like in Nottingham. Adventures of a Splendian by Garci Rodriguez de Montalvo. In the I just think like that people just pick a name out of the hat or like they're just like, ah, oh, now I'm on a piece of land. What should I call it? Boom. I don't know. Nottingham, dude. Story this fictional plane so, fought alongside Muslim allies. And so, some say the name may have been chosen by the author to be similar to the title of a Muslim leader, the Caliph. Uh -huh. In 1846, the US conquered California from Mexico and the Spanish name was kept. California's name is therefore likely to That's have come cool. from a book. And speaking of books, let me quickly tell you about the sponsor of today's video, Blinkist. Are you like me, who constantly buys books but then has little time to actually read them? Unfortunately, so, I'm not. Might like what Blinkist offers. I Blinkist struggle to read. That condenses books into 15 minute reads or listening sessions. Huh? They take the essential How? of over 3,000 non-fiction books and present it to you for quick consumption. And if you sometimes do happen to have the time, they also offer full length audiobooks did they read it to me? Off the regular price. Oh, 14 million people already use Blinkist. I've tried it myself and I like it a lot. I found some great book summaries about history, one about Alexander the Great and another about Napoleon. In each of them, they summarize each of these great generals' conquests in just over 20 minutes. The first 100 people I'm more of a movie guy. I ain't gonna lie. General knowledge are going to get unlimited free access for a week to try it out. You can cancel anytime. And if you choose to continue so on to a full membership, you'll get 25% off as well. So if you're interested, click the link in the description to try out Blinkist. Next to California is Nevada. Also having been named by the Spanish, Nevada. most of these South slash West states were first part of the Spanish colonial empire. It's so weird seeing the map like this. Like he's tripping me out a little bit. Nevada, Nuevo, this guy yeah it's tripping me out it's tripping me out wait on oh unorganized territory yo this is weird michigan united states yeah this is weird then mexico and then finally conquered by the u.s the name sort of means snow covered and comes from the local mountain range sierra nevada then oh, right. arizona the state's name appears i thought it meant no oh that's nueva nu nuvo uh Right, okay. ...to originate from an earlier Spanish name, Arizonac, which derives from the O'odham name Ali Sonac, meaning small spring. O'odham was a native language, although some point out that the Basque language spoken in northern Spain also has the phrase Aritz Ona, which means the good oak, as there were numerous Basque sheep herders in the area, but it's more uh, likely that the origin is the native word. Apparently, there is a misconception that the state's name originated from the Spanish term Arida Zona, meaning arid zone. This is considered a case of folk etymology and is not accurate. But if there's no official record, who knows? Further north is Oregon. The name origin of Oregon is disputed and therefore unknown. There are four options. It huh? has Spanish, native, Portuguese, or French origin. The Spanish could have named it after the word oregano, referring to a plant which grows in the southern part of the oh, region. Oh, you know what? I've actually, I've actually heard of this. It was mentioned in a different video. Uh, or Oregon was like, yeah, some sort of a plant. Yeah, literally what you just said. <laughs> a stream in Spain called... Hey, I'm trying to seem smart. And it's, <laughs> it don't work, man. It don't work. Called the Ajoyo del Oregon, or after the term Orejon, meaning big E, uh -huh. with a J then turning into a G. The native origin... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on. You can't be naming your place Big E. Yeah, let's go with let's go with the greens. Let's go with the plan. The possibility is evident in a 1765 petition to the British king. Robert Rogers, an American colonial frontiersman, wrote, and from thence the river called by the Indians, Oregon. In 1904, the local Sunset Magazine argued the name came from a Portuguese explorer who had named it Ov Agua, meaning hearing water, after the sound the waterfalls made. Hey, I suppose. Oh wait, is the place surrounded by like waterfalls? Th that's pretty cool. Hair and war, that's pretty cool. Do you know what one I really want to see? I want to see New York. Just for the simple fact that England has a place called York. So I want to see if it's linked. With that name then being adapted to Oragua and then Oregon. This one seems kind of a stretch, to be honest. Or Bruh. the French possibility, where the name would come from the spelling of a local river as Waricon. Although this would likely be an adaptation of the native name we saw in the second option. Above Oregon is the state of Washington. This one is pretty straightforward. All we need to do is look at the flag. It's named <laughs> after George Washington. Oh, I wonder where Washington came from. Wait, let me have a think. Hold on. Hold on, I'll get it in a minute. 
I'm pretty sure it's a tree. Whose surname was, in turn, derived from the town of Washington in the historic county of Durham, England. Oddly, the territory was to be named Columbia after the Columbia River, but they found the name too similar to the District of Columbia, the national capital, which itself contains a city named Washington. And so, Washington became the only state named after a US president. That's cool. The East is Idaho. Like the that. name was initially proposed for the colonial territory of Colorado after a supposed native term. But when people realized the native term didn't exist, they abandoned the idea. However, it Already? was too late. Years later, it fell into common usage and ended up being proposed for the actual name of the territory. An alternative etymology attributes the name to the Apache word Idahe, which means enemy. An Apache term was also used by the Spanish to name Utah. Utah. Wait, 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 you're telling me Idaho, uh, Idaho means enemy? So technically, they're the enemy? In the United States of America? Wow. So, if there was gonna have a civil war, it would start at Idaho. Utah, but with a Y. That's what from they're saying the right there. term, Yuda, was the Spanish designation for the local people, which meant high. After becoming part of the US, <laughs> the term was adapted into English, becoming Utah. <laughs> yo, 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 yo. Wait, wait, wait. You got, listen, Americans is watching this video, right? Do a lot of people get high in Utah? Because that right there is perfect. If Utah is Utah and Utah means high, boom. I, I, I'm expecting that their stats and stuff for people getting high is way up there. Back south, New Mexico. This one is pretty straightforward too, from the Spanish Nuevo Mexico, meaning the new. Oh, no, no, have, wait, how do you say that? I thought you say nu, Nuevo. That means new, yeah. Nuevo Me Mexico. Mexico. In turn, the name Mexico comes from the Nahuatl native language, which referred to the Aztec people who founded the city of Tenochtitlan. Oh, say, what's that say? Also named by the Spanish in 1743. It roughly means colored, but in this case, it meant ruddy or red, originally referring to the Colorado River and that its muddy color. Why wait, 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 wait. That's the actual Colorado River? Is that what it actually looks like? Wait, no way, bro case it meant ruddy or red this originally is what actually referring like? to the colorado river and its muddy color wyoming gets its name Sick. from the wyoming valley in pennsylvania which itself got its name from a muncie word another native language this one which i'm not even going to try to pronounce wait wait i'll do it for you why me why mank why mank it literally meant big river flat. Montana is again super straightforward. It means mountain in Spanish. Montaña del Norte was the name given by the early Spanish. Yeah, there's a lot of mix like Spanish names in in uh, America, which was quite kind of like surprising at first when I first started like watching videos about America. But now it's not really, especially with like Mexico being so close. But yeah. Really cool. Explorers to the entire mountainous region of Western North America. It was proposed by the US government for the territory that ended up becoming Idaho, but then changed as they thought it had. Yeah, I can imagine the meat for coming up with a name. Like, oh, yo, what should we call this place? This piece of land right here. Montana. <laughs> Montana. Literally that, just mound, just points a mound and just says Montana. Had no meaning, only to be proposed in 1864, once again, for what is now Montana. There were some complaints, again, especially because it was somewhat misleading, since Montana itself is not that mountainous. And the oh. name of Shoshon, a native tribe, huh? was proposed. But the Committee of Territories ignored it and stuck with Montana. The North fake Montana. Dakota have the same name, minus the geographic indicator, named after the Dakota CU Native American tribes. And Dakota is actually also a word in the language of these people, literally meaning allies or friends. Nebraska oh, cool. comes from the native. So you got Idaho, who's the enemy, and uh, wait, what was that again? Oh, Dakota. Dakota's is the allies. Friends. Nebraska's friends. name comes from the native Chiwer, specifically the word Nebraska, which literally means flattened water. It was first chosen as the name for the Nebraska River and then for the territory right. and state. I have to be honest, I was not aware so many states had a native origin in their names. Kansas yeah, is named cool. after the Kansas River, which in turn was named after the Kansas Native Americans who lived along its banks. Tribe's name is often said to mean people of the South 
south wind, although this was probably not the term's original meaning. In 1827, the Kansas Territory was established, choosing this name for that reason. Arkansas... <laughs> Yo, this is actually really cool. And it's actually really cool, like... If you're watching from America and these are your states, make sure you comment down below which states are yours and stuff. Well, which states you live in? Because I highly doubt you own the state. But yeah, it's really cool for you guys to find out and find out a little bit of, you know, background to like your state name. It's really cool. I'd actually uh, like to see what's the background to my um, my birthplace, uh, Nottingham. So th then again, it'll probably just say Robin Hood has a very similar name just adding a prefix to the word and the origin is also similar the name arkansas initially applied to the arkansas river it derives from a french term a plural for their transliteration of akanza an algonquin term for the kapow people akanza oh. is likely also the root term for kanza which then led to the kansas name oklahoma is the putting together of two choctaw words okla and Homa. In Choctaw, Okla means tribe or nation, and Homa means red, so red nation. Although a rough translation could also be Indian territory. Oh, Moving sick. on to the biggest state of the continental 48, Texas. Texas's name origin is in the word Taisha, which means Taisha. friend in the native Caddo language. Oddly enough, during Spanish colonial rule in the 18th century, the area was briefly known as New Philippines. Give Wait, where? Oh, right here? Given that the Asian country was, at the time, also a Spanish colony. Wait, LA is here? Wait, what? Wait, LA is not here, no? No, it's not. No, no, no. LA is not that into Texas. Yo, that's, it, that's weird. Because LA is all the way over here, right? Am I dumb? Don't answer that. <laughs> How weird would it be if that had stuck around and Texas was similarly to New York or New Jersey, now New called Philippines. New Philippines. Yeah, that's what Louisiana it. is again very straightforward, as was evident. Yeah, 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 because LA. Nah, Louisiana. On the thumbnail Bro, of the, video. the place. It was named after Louis XIV, King of France from 1643 to 1715, when Rene Robert Cavalier claimed the territory for France. He named it. La Louisiane. So roughly, Louis plus Yan carries the idea of related to Louis or land of uh, Louis. Once part of the French colonial empire, the Louis related to Louis. Oh, or wait, it wasn't LA. It was La Louisiane. Oh, right. Okay. That makes sense. That makes sense land of Louis. Once part of the French colonial empire, the Louisiana territory stretched from the Atlantic coast in the south to just north of the present-day Canada border. The territory was sold by the French to the United States in 1803 for 15 million dollars. That's four cents an acre. This would be equivalent to around 300 million dollars. Yo, imagine you can buy that today. Bro, imagine like, imagine you was back then, then again, you would have to like, you would have to have a lot of money back then that but that's crazy in today's money still a pretty cheap price for something that is equivalent to almost a third of the u.s's territory that's Mississippi mad. follows the trend of being named after the local river the mississippi which defines its western boundary european settlers named it after the oribwe word mizi zibi which translates to great river the missouri river the also led to the naming of the state of missouri and the river itself got its name from the indigenous missouri natives following that method we saw was common at the start of the video native tribe you know what i've seen a theme with a lot of these right a lot of these is named after the river which was the river was named from the native tribe group the, the, there's a very common theme of all of these river colonial territory and state it is well, said a that lot these specific natives were called the wimi sorita meaning those who have dug out canoes the name was adapted and westernized according to how they pronounced it moving on to iowa iowa derives its name from the iowa people one of the many native american nations whose territory was within the future state at the time of european colonization minnesota comes from the native dakota designation for the minnesota river which got its name from one I of guess. two words in dakota minnesota which means clear blue water Nisota. Nisota, which means cloudy water. Kind of an odd choice of words. Yeah, which one you want to go with? You want to go with clear or you want to go with cloudy? Like, they're kind of like uh, the opposite. <laughs> 
considering they sound so similar but mean pretty much the exact right. opposite. It is said the Kota people demonstrated the name to early settlers by dropping milk into water and calling it Minnesota, huh? which would mean the cloudy meaning would be the right one. Next, Wisconsin. The word Bro, they try to create like a milk river. Wisconsin originates from the name given to the Wisconsin River by one of the Algonquin speaking tribes. French explorer Jacques Marquette was the first European to reach the Wisconsin River, arriving in 1673 and calling the river Meskousing. Subsequent French writers changed the spelling to Wisconsin, and over time this became the name for both Wiz. the river and yeah, the surrounding okay. lands. And then it was adapted into English. When it comes to Illinois, the state is named for the French adaptation of a native word, Ilenwiwa, which means... Imagine if, like, that was actually called it today. Like, Illinois was actually today Illinois Wiwa. Speak normally. This adaptation was made by early French Catholic missionaries and explorers Wiwa. to the local natives as such. Eventually, the state was named after that tribe. Michigan has a similar story, a native name adapted and rephrased into French. However, this one didn't refer to the local population. It was just a term they used to define large water or large lake. Right. Meshigami in the Oibwe language. Let's Wait, why have I heard that before? How have I heard that? Before? I've definitely heard Mishigami before. I don't I don't know how, I don't know when, I don't know what, but I've definitely heard that before, 100%. Water or large Mishigami. lake. Mishigami in the Oibwe. Like I've heard it in like a movie or something. The language. Let's jump to the northeast and go along the coast for the other ones, starting with Maine. The origin of the name Maine is unclear. One theory is that it was named after the French province of Maine. Another is that it derives from a practical nautical term, the mainland. And a more recent proposal is right. that it was named after the English village of Broad Maine, which huh? was the family estate of Sir Ferdinando Gorges. Oh, wait. Okay, so we got one linked to England, right? I'm really like looking forward to New York. Bring on New York. I, I really want to see where New York came from. The colony's founder. A combination of the last two seems to be the most likely. New Hampshire was named by English Captain John Mason. Right. gotten a land patent to establish a colony in the area. After doing so, he named it New Hampshire after the county of Hampshire in England. Okay. Vermont's name. Hey, listen, the people, the, the English people that went over there, they're not really creative. I'm not going to lie. They're just like, ah, we got Hampshire in England. Yeah, let's call it New Hampshire. <laughs> The new version comes from the combination of two French words, the Vert and Mont, Green Mountain. Vert in French means green and Mount means mountain. Yeah, I call it the Mont Sans French. Or mountain, likely because of the green mountains like that characterize the states. In fact, the short-lived independent Vermont Republic used as its ensign the Green Mountain Boys flag. Massachusetts yeah. takes us back into native origins. The Massachusetts Bay Colony was named after the indigenous population. Oh my God, Plymouth, Plymouth is in England as well. Whose name likely came from a native word, Muswak Shasut. I'm really sorry I'm mispronouncing all of these, but I just couldn't find Muswak Shasut. Find the proper pronunciation. And this term directly translates to big mountain. Moving on to Rhode Island. Despite its name, most of Rhode Island is located on the mainland of the United States. Prior to 2020, the state's official name was State of Rhode Island and Providence Plantations, which was created after. Wait, it didn't come from Family Guy? Huh? Bro, I've been lied to this whole entire time. With a merger of four colonial settlements. In 2020, they finally got rid of the plantation part because of the negative historical connotation, and if nothing else, because it's not a plantation anymore. Right. It's not certain where the original name of Rhode Island came from, but two historical origins are presented as possibilities. One comes from explorer Giovanni da Verrazzano, who thought an offshore island of the region was- These names are just so fun to say, I ain't gonna lie. Our names are so boring nowadays. Giovanni da Verrazzano, 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 Verrazzano. Resembled the island of Rhodes off the coast. I wonder why we simple that names now. <laughs> of Greece, and the other has to do with a Dutch explorer. Adrian oh, Blum. Rhodes in Greece, Rhode Island. I've been to Rhodes in Greece. Oh, it's really nice. Who described it as an island of reddish appearance, which was Hodlik Island in 17th century Dutch. This would have then been adapted into Rhode Island in English. Uh. Connecticut is once again of native origin. Kinitukut was an eastern Kinitikut. Algonquin word, which meant land on the long tidal river. New Jersey follows New Hampshire's example and is named after Jersey, the largest of the British Channel Islands. Dr the birthplace yep. of one of the colony's two co-founders, Sir I knew it was in England. George the Carteret. 
Ray. However, the state was initially created Wait, under I the can... name of New Caesarea because the Roman name of the original Jersey was thought to have been this during the times of the Roman Empire. Yeah, I ain't gonna lie. The people that came from the UK, they're really not Korean. Like, not one bit. Because all of the names are just new and then boom. The place. <laughs> and New York continues this trend, being named after the then Duke of York, right. King James II of England, so both after the English town and its duke. Next cool. to it is Pennsylvania and England. I can't lie, your New York is definitely better than our York. I ain't gonna lie. I ain't gonna lie. I like to swap. You guys wanna swap? English writer Probably founded not. a province of Pennsylvania as an English colony. In honor of his father and probably his family in general, he named it Pennsylvania, combining oh, their name, Penn, cool. and the Latin term Sylvania, which translates as woodlands. Delaware gets its name from the Delaware River. The river itself was named after Lord Delaware, who was the first governor general of the colony of Virginia. And Maryland, named by George Calvert, the first baron of Baltimore, after Queen Henrietta Maria, wife of King Charles I of England. Although some Catholic scholars believe the baron named the province after Mary, the mother of Jesus. Virginia was the first uh, British colony in continental North America. Its name at the time meant country of the virgin after Elizabeth I of England, who was known as the Virgin Queen because- Wait, does that mean like everyone was there virgins? So technically, everyone in Virginia, you are virgins. You are the country virgins. Pretty much. That, that, that's what he's saying. That's what, that's pretty much what he's saying is what. She never married. West Virginia obviously has the same origin. Now you guys are West virgins. The West referring to their possession over the Western territories of the formerly larger Virginia state upon separation. Ohio gets its name from a Seneca native word. Ohio, meaning large creek, originally the name of both the Ohio and Allegheny rivers. I like that word. Ohio. Very simple and means the land of Indians or simply Indian land. When in 1800, the United States Congress passed legislation to divide the Northwest Territory into two areas, it named the Western section the Indiana Territory. I can't lie. I didn't realize how, like, I didn't think how much I would actually enjoy a video talking in so much detail about how states got their names. I ain't gonna lie. This is really interesting. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. Perhaps to differentiate it from the East where further colonization by Europeans had taken place. Moving to Kentucky. In 1776, yeah, Virginia's colony included most of England's claims in North America. And the counties beyond the wait, colony wait, wait. included most- My name's Lewis Grant. What's going on here? The Virgin- Wait, all the Grants are virgins? Wait, I should be here. Why am I not living here, bro? Most of England's claims in North America and the counties beyond the Appalachian Mountains became known to Europeans as Con New England Grant, Connecticut Grant, Mask. Listen, I'm recording this video really late at night, right? And I'm at sorry, that, that was my mic for being way with my headset. I recorded quite late at night, so I'm really tired. I don't know if you can tell, but am I tripping? Why am I seeing so many of my last name? Mask Grant, Connect. Am I actually tripping? What's going on? What is going on? North America and the counties beyond the Appalachian Mountains became known to Europeans as Kentucky County, named for the Kentucky River. The origin of the name is uncertain, but probably based on an Iroquois name meaning on the meadow. In the two native languages of Mohawk or Seneca, it was said as Kentucky or Gedage, respectively. Others have suggested the term Kenta Aki, which could Kenta have come Aki. from an Algonquin language. Tennessee's name comes from the local Cherokee too, which had a village called Tanazi, located on a river with the same name. The meaning of this name is unknown, although some accounts suggest it meant something like meeting place. Moving to the Carolinas, North and South Carolina were one colony, Carolina, until 1729. By 1663, King Charles II of England granted a charter to start a new colony on the North American continent, and apparently he ordered it to be named Carolina in honor of his father, Charles I. Alabama was Fair named enough. after the Alabama River, which in turn was named by the Europeans due to the native Alabama tribe. In the native language, the word for a person of this specific native lineage is also Albamo. Georgia was named after British King George II. It is the feminine Latin ah. form of George. It was also a reference. See, my sister's called Georgia, right? So this was always linked to my sister. Well, not actually my sister, but I, every time I say I always think, you know, that's my sister's name. It came from, that's why it's called Georgia. The feminine version of George 
fan of George II. It is the feminine Latin form of George. It was also a reference to Saint George, whose name was derived from the Greek word Georgos, meaning farmer from Ge, which is earth, and Ergon, which is work. And finally, Florida was named by the Spanish in 1514 from the Spanish term Florida, often referring to a place's abundance of flowers. Flower. The state's name specifically is a shortening of La Florida, the flowery one, or Pascua Florida, flowery Easter, although then just being simplified to Florida. It is the Fair oldest enough. surviving European given place name in the US. Oh, wow, the United cool. States also have some territories and a federal district. Very quickly, the name origins of those are in Washington DC or District of Columbia. The name comes from Christopher Columbus, the famous European navigator. American Samoa is composed of two parts, Sa meaning sacred and Moa meaning center. So the name can mean holy center. Alternately, it can also mean place of the sacred Moa bird of Polynesian mythology. Guam comes from the local Chamorro language, specifically the word Guahan, meaning what we have, a designation for the island first used in the Treaty of Paris of 1898. The Northern Mariana Islands were named Bruh, how many islands linked to America? by Spain in 1667 after Yo. Queen Mariana of Austria. Puerto Rico comes from the name the Spanish gave to the island in 1493, meaning rich port. Oddly enough, that the meant? island was originally named San Juan Batista after St. John and the capital city was named Puerto Rico, but eventually they switched the two. The island became Puerto Rico and the capital, San Juan. The U.S. Virgin Islands were also named in 1493, Ilas Virgenes, the name... Yo, that was a lot of virgins making these names. I ain't gonna lie. There's a lot of virgins like being flown about here. Christopher Columbus gave to them upon European discovery. And finally, the many US outlying islands huh? have various origins. Baker Island and Wake Island, the Johnston Atoll and Kingman what are these were islands? Named after sea captains. Jarvis Island was named after three people, all named Jarvis, who discovered the island apparently. You're telling me three people, all called Jarvis, at the same time discovered this island? Bro, that is sick. That is actually really cool. The way Atoll was named for its location being approximately halfway between North America and Asia. Howland Island was named after a whaling Midway. ship. And the Palmyra Atoll was also named after the locally shipwrecked USS Palmyra. While Navassa Island comes from the Spanish term Nava, meaning plain, since the island is very flat. So wow. that is the origin or supposed origin of each US state, territory, and federal district's names. Do you like the state names or should some of them be renamed? That also, was actually really cool or to exist, what should they be called? Should they maintain whatever the territory's name is now or create a new one? Nah, you can't change the names. You can't, you can't. There's history to them now. They got some pretty cool backgrounds to them as well. Really cool, really interesting video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. Also, let me know which state you guys are from and what you guys think. If you guys enjoy, make sure you leave a thumbs up, subscribe for more content. I'm live every single day on twitch.tv before slash If you guys want to check me out over there, I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.